Hey everybody, it's Nick uh, for today's tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to place uh, a virtual window in a frame uh, and then how to change the, the view from the window uh, with uh, textures that you can control with gestures. So this is a combination of a couple of different tutorials that, that I've already got kind of made and I'll put some links to them. I'm just going to show you basically how to use the scripts that I created and a little bit about how they work, but I'm not going to go through every single uh, line of code. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like. And this captures my iPad. I found that newer model uh, phones are, are much better at like the vertical detection. Uh, and I think that'll only improve as the uh, as like the chips uh, like improve on your phones. But this is an iPad uh, 2019 that does not have the A12 or A13 chip, uh, but still does better than my my old iPhone 6. Uh, so it detects it pretty fast. You can see the uh, the kind of mesh preview. As soon as that plane is enabled, I can go ahead and tap uh, places, and it'll try to place them on. It'll it'll try to place these contact points on the plane. Um, and these, these points or these reference points uh, have to be drawn. So we draw top left, bottom left, and then uh, bottom right. And what we do with those is actually calculate um, the height and the width of the uh, window. The reason why I, I don't um, only use two points is because I found that it's actually uh, much more effective to calculate the distance from the top and the bottom. So that would give you the length. And then this point to that point will give you the the width. Um, again, it's it's easier to con to calculate the vector distance, and it's more effective. Uh, if somebody knows math better than I do, or a programmer, ever let me know. If there's a better way to do it, but this this works pretty reliably. So we'll go one point, uh, two two point three points. Let me go back here. Sorry, I kind of skip through that. Let me start this over so the thing fades out. Come on, we got one, two, three. There we go. And now you've got a plane. You know, it's not perfect, but I did this pretty quickly. And then as you as you swipe with your gesture, uh, it's going to control that. And you can see it does. You know, again, my phone's not great, but or my my iPad's not great, but it does it does map that to the window pretty well. And you can just keep swiping. So that's what the effect is. Okay. The other thing I want to mention before I forget is that these are actually, uh, these are textures, but they're also um, emissive textures. One thing you'll notice about, you know, especially when you're inside on, um, in a space that's not super well lit, is that the outside window is much more exposed than the inside. And so if you don't think about the, the emissive nature of the texture, the fact that the texture acts as a light source, so that it's actually very bright, you will get kind of a dull texture and it won't look very effective and so I've worked hard to get a piece in the script that gives you um, an emissive texture for each one of these textures and I think it works pretty well like it does stay kind of bright again if you don't take that into account it's not going to uh, look that realistic uh, of course the texture that you select needs to be more realistic these are flat you really want something that looks like it's taken from a window something that's got some depth okay but, uh, but that's that's what all this looks like. Like, that's what this is going to look like when we're all done. So, um, let me get rid of this here. Pardon me. Okay. So, in Unity, I've made a basic AR scene. Uh, I've got all my uh, um, AR packages installed. You should know how to do that by now. I got rid of the main camera. I added an AR session origin and an AR session uh, component. All that's, like, pretty much stock. And then the other thing that we did was I created just a uh, quad so you go in you can say like create a uh, quad okay and it's set to uh excuse me it's set to just one to one to one scale um it has no material uh all the settings are pretty much default and if we take a look at it you can see that's what it looks like okay that's that's the that's the default uh quad okay doesn't show up in my assets uh under my prefabs as anything doesn't look like anything but trust me it's there so that there's no material it's a standard one by one by one quad what we're going to do with that is scale it to fit the window and then apply the texture to it so it's important to go ahead go ahead and create one of those if you haven't uh, uh i mean if you've got if you got my script you've got it but um you can go ahead and make one of those here and then drag it into your prefabs folder and just give it a name and i call this on my plane it's fine. Okay. And then the other the other things that it matters is that under textures, I have a folder, and I just made a folder called textures for swapping. And you can go ahead and put your textures um, in here. 
they are going to stretch. So if you have a particular sized window or something like that, you want to be thinking about the aspect of the window when you create your textures. If you wanted to get into it later, we could create something that acts more as a cropping filter. I, I didn't really get into it. So these are these are 512 by 512, just JPEGs. Sorry, pings that I created. Um, yeah, again, it's up to you. Just make sure that it's something that, that Unity can can use. Um, I'll leave it up to you. But right now, just if you export from Photoshop using the default uh, quick quick export as a, as a like PNG, it works just fine. So I don't have a real problem with that. So all that's just you know make a. I think it helps to make a folder within your textures folder that you're going to be drawing from just to keep things uh, straight. And then the last things we need are these are a couple scripts. We have one that's called gesture detection or gesture detector. And then one that I made that's called a texture window placement controller. And this is where all the magic really happens. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do from our blank is just make a, make a, a game object. And we're going to call this one gesture. Oops. Uh, gesture detector. That's it. And then we're going to drag the script for the, the gesture detection onto that. And now it's just in the scene. If you just if you just click on it in the um, in the hierarchy and see it, the script is attached. All that does is it's a simple. Let me go ahead and open it up. Actually, if I'm in Visual Studio here, uh, very simple script that looks. Uh, it says it is. Is there a swipe detected? It has this boolean here. Static static booleans or any kind of static variable is available to the rest of the program. Most of the time, when you when you have a variable, it's it's what's called scoped. So it's only available within this this function. We want to use this uh, script that we're writing uh, that's in the game world uh, to talk to the other script, and that's why it's a static variable. Okay. Um, and then basically every frame, the script is looking for whether there's a touch, and then and then if there if there uh, if there is a touch, then we go to touch phase, and then we look at the beginning and the end of the swipe. And if we detect that there's a difference in the position, we call that a swipe. And this is really generic. It's not detecting whether there is a swipe up or down or left or right, or even the sensitivity of the swipe. It's it's a very, very simple uh, kind of dumb uh, swipe detection. And that's it. And then whenever we detect a swipe, we're just going to say true. And then it gets passed. OK. Then the, since we're in, X, uh, since we're in uh, Visual Studio, I'll just go to the texture placement script. This one's a bit more complicated, but I'll kind of talk you through it. So a lot of this is based on the the texture uh, script that goes with the gesture script. And again, I'll put a link to that in the comments. And then it's built on the uh, plane detection script that we we also put together that uses points. Um, but so we, we here we have like our sort of like containers for the different variables that we're using. We're detecting the number of points we placed already. We have a container for each of the point objects that we're detecting. And then we have a container for the actual window that we're creating. And then this Boolean is toggled, says, did we create a window or not? And right now it says false. And then it also says, which texture are we going to place? It's the first texture in the array. It's zero. Then we serialize the field, which is how we can put our variables into these containers uh, from, from Unity. So we have points one, two, three, which are our prefab points. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then the window plane object, which we, which we'll place in there, and then the textures array, which is just a list of textures. So three textures that we chose. You can have an the way the script is built. You can have an unlimited number of textures. Okay, so there's no this is actually dynamically uh, like scoped. Okay, you have to have one, but there's no ceiling. Okay, okay. Then on awake, we're looking we we're in, uh, instantiating our raycast and plane managers. This is how we detect a vertical plane. We have no points yet. Okay, and then this is a little script that is that is trying to detect uh, whether we're touching the screen, and that's used for the window placement. Okay, then the script is divided into two things. If we've got a window, we can follow this part of the script. If we don't have a window yet, we're going to follow this part of the script. So I'll start with this. So this is a little bit of code that makes it so that even if we uh, if we put our finger down, it's not going to keep making objects. It's only going to make one object at a time. We call a raycast manager, uh, which is if it's detected a, a plane, now we can place points on that plane. That's what this is, trackable type planes. 
Um, every time we hit a plane w with our finger, it's called a pose, which is a transform and a rotate. And so we use that to, to, to get the hit pose position, hit pose rotation. So the first time that we, if we don't have a window yet and we touch the screen on a plane, then we spawn a target point at that location. And then we increment and we say, okay, now we've got one point. Go back through the script again as the program runs. If we've got a point, we're going to spawn another point wherever you tap it, and then we're going to increment that list again. And then the last time we do it, we're going to instantiate that last point. And then this disables the plane manager, so that gray plane disappears. Okay. Then we're going to create um, a, a vector that looks for the center of the window that we created. So we do take the upper corner, this object 1, and the lower corner, object 3. And we basically find the midpoint, and then that's where we put our window plane. So we say spawn new, that's the object that actually we create, uses the window plane uh, uh, like data, the window plane element, and places it at that location with the hit pose rotation of the last point, which should place it uh, in the proper orientation on the window. Okay, now since we've built the window, we are going to set the texture from our textures array using the texture count, which is zero at this point. Okay. And in fact, I could probably just make that zero. Okay. Then, then we have to add the um, emissive texture to it. Otherwise, it's going to be really dull. It's going to be dark um, because it's, it's going to use your phone's light sensor, which is probably in a dark place, and it's not going to look realistic. So... Um, the way that emissive textures works is there's a color that, that establishes how bright it actually is. And I'm setting this to gray, which is actually basically 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So it's, it's, it's not quite so bright. If you made this white, it would be so bright that there'd be nothing to see. It would just be white. And we don't want that. So we're going to go gray. And you can change this if you want to. Um, and then we're going to say get the color from that value. So it's gray. Okay. Then we go in and we're going to enable emission. We have to do that. We have to turn on the emission property, and that's what this does. Then we go in and we're going to set the emission texture, which happens to be the same as the texture of the object. This ensures that the emission um, changes as the, as the color values change, and it, it also makes the emission um, like colorful. Okay, so that's basically what we do. Okay. Then we're going to inc increment the texture count because we already placed the texture. So now the next texture will be 1 in the array. Okay. Then we uh, find the scale of the object by basically taking the distance of the... Uh, so the x scale would be the bottom two points, point 0.2 and point 0.3. And then the y scale is the first point and the second point. Uh, and then we... Uh, this is just for debug. I don't need that right now. Um, and then basically we apply those transforms to the uh, local scale of the uh, of the window. And then lastly, I, there's something weird with, with Unity, uh, the way that it uses that point that, at least in my system, I have to rotate at 90 degrees. Um, and so I'm going to do that, because otherwise it doesn't um, look right. Then we destroy those points we created, because we don't need them anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then we um, set the toggle to be true, because we are done making a window. And we go all the way back up to the top. And we now, now if we're going to be using the app, uh, if we're still running the app, now we have a window. And so if we have a window, then we are going to make sure that we aren't, um, if, if we have incremented the count of textures over the number of textures we have, we're going to loop back to the beginning of the texture array. And what this does is basically says we're looking at the at the if if there's a if there's a gesture detected, then we are going to change that texture, and we're going to change that emission texture, and then we're going to increment the count one more time, and then we're going to reset the gesture detector, and then we're ready to go again. And then the next time that we swipe, we go back through this loop again, and that's it. We're never going back to this first this first part of the script. Uh, once we've toggled it, we're just able to swipe and change textures. Okay. Okay, let's go back to Unity and build that Build that again. That's the wrong Unity there. This one, okay. So we got gesture detector, we've got the script in there, now we go to the session origin, and we're going to drop that window uh, texture window script in here. Okay, 
Um, now, I'm going to go back to the prefabs, and I've got this little AR target that I use in my script. It's basically a sphere that's a 0 .005, and it has a material that has a emissive texture on it. So this is what I'm talking about. It's bright. It's like super white. Um, and so it's white, and then the emission color is set to white also, and I've checked emission, and that's all that that is. You, I should have, I should give this to you. You don't have to worry about that. So we're going to go back to the origin, and we're just going to keep dragging um, three AR targets for the points. You can use anything you want, but that's what I created so that it, uh, so that it's visible. Okay, and then the window pane is my plane. And then if you go to textures, we're just going to drag each of these into the textures array. And you can see this is kind of tricky at first. You got to get kind of close to this word textures here. And then you get the green arrow and it's going to drop that and then keep dropping those in there. And you can see it's real smart. It'll have the textures in there. And then as you increase it, it tells you what size the array is. The array is three. It's got three things in it. And that's it. You can place as many of those as you want in there. And the last thing uh, is uh, if you, you go to your AR session origin, you should have an AR plane manager in there uh, and a Raycast manager. If you don't, you definitely need to add in. You just type, just go to add component and then type in, you know, AR plane manager and just drop one of those in there. Okay. And then, and then with your, if you don't have anything set up, go ahead and drop in the AR plane viz prefab that we created that, that's in the files. And then set the detection mode. If you're doing Windows, you got to change that detection mode to vertical. Um, don't detect everything. Don't detect horizontal, right? Um, I find that you have to kind of say nothing and then vertical to get that to work, uh, to get it to stick to one of those things. Um, okay. So most of this is accomplished with the script. I don't think you need to bother with anything else. I mean, if, if your, if your session origin looks like this, you don't need to do anything. Just make sure that your camera has the tracked pose driver. It should by default, but if, if, if it's not working, that might be a bug sometimes. Uh, other than that, everything looks good. So you can go ahead and compile this, and I think I think you'll end up with basically what I've got in this, uh, in this video here. So again, here's the window. Plane detection starts up pretty quick. You don't need to detect the entire plane. You just need to have it started, and then you can place objects on that plane. Make sure that you respect the order of points that I created, and uh, that should work. It should be good to go. All right. Good luck. I will uh, talk to you later.